Hi, we have already seen the most relevant aspects of the unit administrative management to taxation. So we will now focus on some specific elements of taxation in Greece. In this unit, we will see an introduction of taxation, the difference between legal and natural person, the definition of the main taxes found in Greece, taxation of companies in Greece, special taxation regimes, and finally, you will have to do some activities. So let's now see what taxes are. A tax is a mandatory payment to the state without any specific refund. The revenue collected by the state from taxation is used to buy inputs needed by the government to provide goods and services or to redistribute purchasing power among citizens. In essence, taxation redistributes resources from the private sector to the state. Tax base is the item or economic activity on which the tax is imposed. The most common tax basis, tax basis are three broad categories. Income, consumption and wealth. An individual's income is the sum of the value of annual consumption, goods and services and annual savings. Income is often seen as a good indicator of an individual's tax ability. A person's annual consumption is annual income minus the amount of income saved that year. Wealth is the value of an individual's accumulated savings and investments at any given time. These three bases are interrelated. Consumption is the part of income that is not safe, while wealth is the net value of the stock of accumulated saving, savings or investments. In Greece, it is generally accepted that income is considered the basis of tax capacity, much less wealth. We can differentiate two types of taxes. Depending on the base, we have indirect taxes, those applied to goods and services that affect indirectly individuals, such as value-added tax, or direct taxes, those levied directly on individuals or companies, for instance, income tax, corporate tax, inheritance and donation tax, and wealth tax. Depending on the rate base, we may have proportional taxes, the higher the base, the higher the applicable tax. Progressive taxes, the same tax rate is levied on every individual, regardless of the income or wealth. And regressive taxes, when low-income individuals pay a higher charge of taxes, of taxes in comparison to high-income earners. In Greece, the total tax revenue increased considerably between 2006 and 2018, from a bit more than 30% to almost 40% of the gross domestic product. When it comes to the difference between natural person and legal person, a natural person is any individual that is innately able to exercise their rights and obligations. This means that if a natural person sets up a company, they must assume all obligations and liability with their assets. On the other hand, a legal person relates to a company or entity, in other words, all companies that carry out an economic activity. Both types of entities have similarities, such as obligation and rights, but also differences, liability, initial capital invested, invested rights and functioning. In Greece, the most important taxes are the income tax and the value-added tax. The income tax is a direct and progressive tax that is levied on the income obtained by natural and legal persons. The taxable income is categorized in income from the paid employment, income from the business activity, income from capital and income from capital transfer goodwill. The valued added tax or VAT is an indirect and proportional tax that is levied on the final consumers. That is to say, vendors are not affected by the tax. Instead, they must charge it to clients when providing their services. All the taxes for freelancers and companies include the business tax and the solidarity tax. The business tax is a set of 650 euros per year. 
If the company maintains branches, it is set at 600 euros per year for each branch. It has to be noted that under the special freelancers, freelancer employee regime, there are reductions depending on residence. The solidarity tax is calculated on all incomes, that is, income from paid services, business and agricultural activity, interest, rents, compensation, etc. It is not applicable for every year, for example, it was not applicable for the 2020 and 21. Before starting the activity in Greece, you must register with the tax authority by completing a specific form. This can also be done online. You have to select the corresponding activity code number, which is specific for translation, with one subcategory for fin translation. You'll also have to select the VAT status. Detailed and user-friendly information can be found in the website of the Greek Independent Authority for Public Revenue. Taxation is common for any company, whether it is sole proprietorship or another type of company, whether it is limited liability company, private capital company, etc., as those listed in the section of type of companies and freelancers. Common aspects are the following. For incomes up to 10,000 euros, there is a reduced tax rate of 9%. There is an exception for newly registered professionals. For the first ye three years of the activity, the tax rate 9% is reduced by the 50%. For example, the tax rate is 4.5%. There is no tax-free allowance for sole proprietorships. Taxation is on net profits and it starts from the first euro. For sole proprietorships that declare loses of zero profits, the tax is calculated on the presumptive basis. For example, ownership of car, house, loan, etc. Each fiscal year, an advance payment must be made with a rate of 55%. The advance tax is paid in the first year and it is refunded in the next year. Therefore, after the first year, if the income remains constant, the char is not perceived. In this table, we can see the taxation of companies in Greece for 2021. If the income is 10,000 euros, the corresponding tax is 900 euros. For the additional 10,000 euros, a tax rate of the 22% is applied, which means that for an income of 20,000 euros, the corresponding tax is 3,100, and so forth. Starting a sole proprietorship business entails the same responsibilities as any other business. However, under specific circumstances and all the four purposes of taxation, one can join the so-called regime of freelancer employee. Under specific conditions, the income may be taxed as income from paid employment, even if the person is registered as a business. Under this regime, the amount of 8,500 euros is tax-free, as it is for the income from salaried work. The freelancers essentially pay their insurance fees themselves and issue a monthly, a monthly invoice. This regime is specified in the annual tax return and the prerequisites are providing services under a contract for up to three natural or legal person or when 75% of the gross income from the business activity comes from one of the natural or legal person receiving the due services. There must be no commercial capacity and no professional facilities other than the home office. When taxation is done under this scheme, no expenses are deducted for the business, except for the insurance contributions. In other words, the freelancer is not allowed to justify other expenses, even if they have been made for the purpose of doing business, because the person is not exactly considered as a business. Also, transactions with individuals, in other words, retail transactions, are not allowed. This regime does not apply if the taxpayer is an employee, obtains income from the paid work. Another special taxation regime is the one for the newly registered sole proprietorships. 
Under this scheme, for the first five years, there is an exemption from the business tax, 650 euros, and reduced contribution to the social security at 136 euros per month. Also, for the first three years, there is a VAT exemption, a 50% discount on the tax advance, and the tax rate is reduced by a 50%. For example, the tax is 4.5% provided that the annual gross income does not exceed the 10,000 euros. We hope you enjoy this unit. You can complete this introduction with the materials available in the platform. See you in the next video.